Okay, so the next story, this story, it was really weird for me. This next story was really weird for me. It's not a crazy conspiracy. It started off as, that's a funny cryptid, and then happenstance happened. The first time I came across the story of the plant man, I just kind of stumbled across it because I'm always looking for weird stuff. I'm always looking, obviously, that's why I have this podcast, but I'm always looking for bizarre stuff. Always clicking around, following links, rabbit holes, stuff like that. And I came across a cryptid with only one confirmed sighting. So that usually means one of two things. It's totally made up and the guy's just pulling a hoax or he had some sort of mental breakdown or something like that. Or it's just a cryptid that we haven't seen. Now, it's usually the first one. It's almost always when someone's like, yeah, I was walking on the street and a giant banana came after me. I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, it's most likely fake. As the giant banana is attacking you, you're like, I still don't believe it. But came across the Plant Man one, and I kind of like those one-off cryptids. I kind of, I think it's creepier. I think uh, running into a cryptid no one else has run into and the story being true is creepier than running into a Bigfoot. Maybe I'm just being a contrarian. Maybe Bigfoot is too big. Uh, Bigfoot is so 1963. Like, I want the Plant Man. But let's get into the Plant Man real quick. And we're going to go a couple different places for this. So we're, it's been a while, guys. Let's hop in the Carpenter Copter. Because we got a lot of traveling to do. So now you notice that the 50 cal machine guns have been replaced with something. We have giant containers of Roundup, and each of us have to take. Well, I'm piloting the helicopter. I don't know what you guys are doing, but you guys better be holding on to a giant thing of Roundup because we got some spraying to. You got some spraying to do. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was racist or just a bad impression or both. The year is 1968. The place, Rivesville, West Virginia. And we're flying our helicopter over. And moving around the mountains along a trail, we see Jennings Frederick. Which sounds like the name should be the opposite. It should be Frederick Jennings. But I checked my notes several times. It's Jennings Frederick. He's out there. Just hunting. Just doing his thing. Enjoying nature. Trying to ignore the loud helicopter flying overhead. And he hears something. He descri- he can't make out the words, but he describes it as a voice being played on a fast forward like tape recorder. Like no 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 like chipmunks, but a little you know what I mean? Like when you hit fast forward on something and it speeds up. So he can't make out what it's saying, but he hears this voice and he goes, It's weird because it was like I could hear it audibly, but then I also felt like I was hearing it in my head, but I couldn't make sense of it at all. He hears it over and over and over again. And then he sees what's making the noise. What he sees is he describes as a plant man. He said it was taller than him, with an impossibly skinny body, almost like a reed by a river, just a super skinny body, long skinny arms, everything's skinny, everything's skinny. I don't have to keep describing his skinny toes and all this stuff. Everything was skinny. He described him as skeletal, like you could almost just see, it was emaciated what he was looking at. Its eyes were yellow, and it's staring at him. Now, he also described it as having these long, triangle-like ears. So they came out of the head and then ended at points of the top. And the, the ears were taller than its head. And he, he, there's pictures, not photographs, unfortunately, but there's drawings of what he said that it looked like. And on the end of its long, skinny arms, on the, on the end of its long, skinny Franz arms, there are suction cups. And he's watching this creature walk towards him. And now he finally is able to understand what the creature is saying. You need not fear me. I wish to communicate. I come as a friend. We know of you all. I come in peace. I wish medical assistance. I need your help. At that point, he realizes now what it's saying. At the point where the creature says, I need your help. The suction cups open up and there's needles inside of the suction cups where the hand would, hands would be. It reaches forward, grabs him by the arms and begins draining blood from Jennings. And Jennings described it as impossibly strong. He couldn't get away, but he could feel blood being sucked out of him. 
a short while later, I mean, you didn't sit there for like a half hour and be like, so come here often. Like it, it was a, it was a quick suction. <laughs> the creature lets go. And then according to Jennings, takes strides away from him up to 25 feet. So his stride, he was basically doing these huge giant steps. He runs over this hill. And at that point, Jennings hears a, mm, a super loud humming coming from the other side of the hill. And he suspected that was its vehicle. Whatever it was. UFO, underground drilling machine, carpenter copter version 2.0. He doesn't know. He leaves the area. That happened in 1968, and it's interesting because that story came out, and there was, like, articles in the newspaper, and there was sketch artist drawings of what the creature looked like. And when I was looking at the plant man, I saw several references saying, this creature's never been spotted again. So was it made up? Was it a one-off cryptid? Was it an alien? Nobody knows. But this creature was never spotted again. It wasn't spotted again in the area. It wasn't spotted again at all. And I go, that's an interesting way to start an episode, just a short little story about a cryptid. Now, when I was looking for more information on the plant, man, I found something that's kind of similar, but maybe a little unrelated, a little funny. 1966, so two years earlier, in Newport, Oregon, three girls are walking around in the forest, and they see what they describe as three walking tree stumps moving through the forest as well. They had no head, no arms, just root-like legs, and they're walking around. (laughs) And they were wearing outfits. So, first off, if I just saw a bunch of tree stumps walking around, I'd be like, whoa, dude, that's trippy. But I would think maybe they they were just like cryptids or fairies or something like that. But these guys were wearing spandex outfits that were like multicolored. They were like yellow and orange and pink and blue. So, who knows what to make of that? Were they aliens? Little tree stumps just walking around? They hadn't grown properly? I think you know where I'm going with this. Or was it just something the girls made up? But no other additional sightings of those guys either. So I'm thinking, ha, that'd be funny if the tree stumps turned into the plant man. And I thought, well, they're probably just two completely unrelated things in other parts of the world. There's no comparison between the two other than the fact that one looks like a plant and the other one was described as a plant. Funny story to put to the beginning of an episode and then I'll do something about something else. That night, I so I read all this stuff. I read all this stuff about plant man. And that night I was like, okay... Got that story set up. It's all ready to go. And I'm fiddling around on my phone, and I'm doing more research as I'm in bed. And I see a link for some for something called the Sayama City Incident. Sayama City Incident. So let's hop back in the carpenter copter. We're leaving the little girls in the forest and their tree stumps. We're leaving Jennings and his bleeding hands. We're not offering any assistance. We're just observers. Let's go to Sayama City in Japan. In 1978, so 10 years after the events of the West Virginia plant man, there was a father who's up in the mountains of Sayama City. His name is Haidichi Amano. Haidichi Amano. And he's a ham operator. Not like an operator of pork and pork products, but he is a radio operator, ham radio operator. And the best reception he could get was up in the mountains. But anyway, so he's up in the mountains talking to his brother via ham radio and just kind of messing around. His daughter, his two-year-old daughter, is in the back seat sleeping. This is the best place for him to go. It's a nice little place for her to sleep. Whatever. He's up there. And all of a sudden, it's nighttime, by the way, because I should have said that. All of a sudden, the whole area is bathed in a bright white light. And Haidichi can't figure out where the light's coming from, but it's really, really concerning to him. It also concerning to him because his ham radio isn't working right now. And it doesn't seem like any of the electronics in his car are working. Actually, in 1978, did they have a bunch of electronics in cars? The ham radio actually he definitely wasn't working. I don't think his GPS was going out of control. But so he's, he's sitting there and he has his daughter in his back. So he sees this bright white light coming from somewhere. And so he sticks his head out of his car window and he starts looking around into the night. He's looking all over into the forest, not seeing anything. He looks up. He's not seeing anything in the sky. He's not seeing our helicopter. He gets back into the... Like, he leans his neck back into the car, and that's when he realizes that the white light is coming from inside the car. He, at that point, turns back to look into the back seat where his daughter is sleeping, and she is paralyzed and foaming at the mouth. She's just like... Just like almost frozen, and foam is coming out of her mouth. And in that second, once he realizes that and he begins to turn, he notices in the passenger seat is an alien. 
But not just any alien. This alien looks identical to the plant man. The differences were that this one wasn't super skinny. He was bulkier. But he had the same face, the exact same ears. And he had this weird little metal pipe sticking out of his mouth. And at that point, no joke, at that point I'm reading the article and Haidichi says, It was saying something, but I couldn't understand what. It sounded like a tape recorder on Fast Forward. As far as I know, no one has ever connected these two events before. At all. I, I, when I was searching for the plant man, they constantly said it was the only time this was seen. When I was looking at the Sayama City thing, no one ever mentioned the plant man in West Virginia. But whatever this creature was, appears to be the same. And we'll get a little more into that. But anyways, so Haidichi is sitting in his car and that creature, whatever it was, presses the metal pipe against his head and messages were beamed into Haidichi's head. And then the creature just disappeared after, again, an indeterminate amount of time. I don't know how long the blood was being sucked out of Jennings, and they never really say how long this happened. There's a period of lost time. And Haidichi ended up, the creature left, he ended up driving, the car started working again, he went to a police station, he filed a report. It was kind of like this big thing, he kind of became a joke in the area, nobody believed him, and people believed the government was trying to cover it up or whatever. But again, a one-off incident. Oh, the Sayama City incident. Here's this guy. It may be true. It may not. But he saw this alien. It's not a gray. It's not what we normally think they look like. It had these weird ears, giant eyeballs. You know, everything was the same. This one also had an indentation of a triangle in its head. So here is my theory. I'm going to leave the little girl and the tree stumps out of it for right now. But it could still play into this. I think it's the same creature. I think it's the same creature. And and based on the, the humming and the electrical stuff, it most likely is an alien. But it's very one of two scenarios. One, that the creature that Haidichi saw at Sayama City was its natural form. And the one that Jennings ran into actually was injured and sick. That's why it was super emaciated. That's why it was described as skeletal. And by drinking human blood, it was able to return to its healthy form. You could also say that that is simply the life cycle of this plant man. Just like any plant, they start off just kind of like frail and weak. And then with the right nutrients, they get strong. With strong roots and strong stems and beautiful flowers and all that stuff. If you take those two things as true. If both of these people who never met each other 10 years apart made up identical stories involving identical stuff. Because it's not like the plant man was huge news and they were reading about it in Japan. I mean, there is a chance... That the dude in Japan happened to read an article about a one-off sighting in West Virginia and decided to make up the exact same story. But if they're making it up, their best bet would be like, oh, they were greys and they told me to save the environment. They told me that we needed to conserve energy because you know that's all the grey aliens say nowadays. But if we follow the thought line that, and let's throw the little girls in here too. These aliens land and they're basically just stumps. They're root systems. And then they begin to grow into what the plant man, the guy saw in West Virginia, the emaciated saying, I need medical assistance, to its natural, more powerful form, which is what we saw in Sayama City. There's only one nutrient that these guys drink in this story. There's only one thing, if you follow that thought line, there's only one thing that that alien needed to be strong. And that was human blood. Are there plant-like aliens walking around drinking humans' blood to nourish themselves? The idea of aliens drinking blood or using body parts or harvesting humans and stuff like that, that's not a new idea. That's been around in the lore for a long time. But generally, that's what they do on their spaceships. They, like, abduct you or they do it in some sort of clinical laboratory or something like this. What the story of the plant man suggests is that you could be out in the middle of the woods and get attacked by one of these things. The story of the plant man of West Virginia really no longer seems like a one-off cryptid. It actually seems like it's connected to the Sayama City UFO incident. And it needed a little bit of human blood to get itself to grow to its normal form. At the end of the day, may it turn out that humanity, the greatest life form to ever walk across this planet, Someday we'll just become plant food for a race from beyond the stars. 
That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.